In Japan today, some two million persons are suffering from tuberculosis. Every year, as many as 100,000 lives are taken by this disease. To save life, it is necessary sometimes to cut out the diseased portion of the lung. This is the diseased portion of the lung. The infected part of the lung has turned into a white cheese-like formation. As decomposition advances, the tubercular germs which have been held in mix with the sputum and spread to other parts of the body or is discharged from the mouth when the patient coughs, thereby spreading the disease to others. These are colonies of TB germs. Here you get an idea of the size of a TB germ by comparing it with slender human hair. By getting an enlarged view of the germ through an electronic microscope, we can see that it's covered with a wax-like membrane. Now let us examine the nature of TB germs. Given nutrition similar to the human body to feed upon and the same body temperature of 37 degrees centigrade, the germs grow. Let's observe the germs under a slow motion camera and see how they grow and multiply. The scale is one one hundredth of a millimeter. The germ multiplies very slowly, once every 10 hours, from 1 to 2 and 2 to 4. Compared with TB germ, the colic germ which inhabits our intestines multiplies at the rate of once every 20 minutes. At this speed, there is quite an increase in 5 hours. Let's see again how TB germs multiply. After 10 hours. After 20 hours. After 30 hours. After 40 hours. Thus you see. TB germs multiply at a much slower speed 
than other germs. In almost all cases, tuberculosis begins from infection of the lungs. The lungs are moved by the diaphragm and the thorax. Under the X-ray, the lung appears transparent. Only the shadows of the blood vessels can be seen. This is because the lung is filled with air. By pouring oil into the bronchial tubes to create shadows, we can see the three-dimensional ramification of the tubes. At the extremity of the bronchus is a small soft sac called the lung vesicle. This is where the respiration takes place. The outer side of the vesicle is covered with a network of blood vessels and blood flows through them with great force. Blood after circulating around the body takes in oxygen from the air, throws off carbon dioxide, and resumes circulation completely refreshed. In this film, animals have been used for experiments that cannot be conducted on the human body. Unawares, we inhale what is emitted by the cough of persons afflicted with tuberculosis. Now let us see what happens if we inhale tuberculous bacilli into our lungs. On the inside of the bronchus, there is a minute hair-like growth invisible to the naked eye. Whatever is caught by the hair is sent upward one after the other, and eventually is spat out in the form of sputum. Some of the TB germs find their way to the extremities of the bronchus and enter the lung vesicles. There are no more hairs near the lung vesicle. As the vesicle is a sac constituting a trap, the TB germs have no escape and are forced to settle down here. As the temperature here is ideal, the germs begin to grow and slowly multiply by feeding on the nutrition they get here. When this happens, do our bodies become helpless prey to the ravenous TB germs? When the germs settle down, white blood corpuscles come swarming into the blood vessels nearby. They roll over and over along the walls of the blood vessels and eventually slip through crevices on the wall and bear down on the germs that have come in there. These white blood corpuscles have been filmed by special means. The movements shown here are faster than in actual life. The TB germs are seen at the upper right In the case of ordinary germs, the work of the white blood corpuscles alone is sufficient to control the bacilli. But TB germs, wrapped in a wax-like membrane, have strong resistance, and the corpuscles alone are not enough to overcome them. When the white blood corpuscles begin to lose ground in the fight against TB germs, large cells called monocytes, much stronger than the corpuscles, appear on the scene and the fight becomes even more intense. A 
battle royal goes on inside, an important battle for life. But no pain is felt, not even the slightest itch. At present, there is no way of finding out whether one has tuberculosis or not, other than by tuberculin reaction. A person who has previously had TB has developed such resistance against it that the reaction is strong and a red swelling occurs. But one does not necessarily become sick just because he has contracted TB. In most cases, fortunately, the cells gradually become stronger. The cells have taken TB germs into their bodies. And thus, in many cases, persons are cured without ever knowing they had TB. Let's see by X-ray photography an actual case where the cells have won over the germs. There is a dark shadow of the disease on the lung shown at the left. Because the body was given adequate rest when the disease was only in its incipient stage, this person has been cured, leaving only a mark. Moreover, as strong resistance has been developed against TB, there is less fear of catching that disease again. But the cells do not always come out the winner. If a person inhales many germs, or germs of great virulence, or if he overuses his body, knowing or not knowing that he has tuberculosis, his body resistance becomes weak and the cells gradually lose out to the TB germ. But that is not all. TB germs feed on the dead cells and propagate themselves. The disease grows and spreads without the victim knowing. Generally speaking, it is said that the question of whether a person who has contracted tuberculosis gets cured or unfortunately falls victim to the disease is determined within one year. Shortly after catching the disease, the lymphatic gland near the affected part begins to swell. As is often seen in cases of young children, when the lymphatic glands swell one after the other, the tuberculous bacilli finally flows into the blood, causing a miliary disease and resulting in acute miliary tuberculosis. Germs that enter the blood invade the kidney and cause kidney tuberculosis. When they invade the bones, they cause caries. If the membrane of the brain is affected, the result is meningitis tuberculosis, which is fatal. The dark shadow to the right is caused by moist pleurisy. It appears about six months after one gets this illness. Pleurisy itself can be cured in a few months, but care must be taken because lung ailment often develops afterwards. Ominous shadows of tuberculosis are said to appear in the lung within half a year to a year after the disease is contracted. A shadow can be seen at the upper left. At this stage, Overexertion of the body must be avoided. Otherwise, lung activity would be intensified and the cells which are trying to beat down the germs would be forced to go down to defeat. Then the affected lesion begins to collapse and the TB germs which have been hiding inside suddenly become vigorous at the touch of fresh air and begin to multiply. TB germs, which have been growing in numbers, 
are communicated to others by the sprays of the sputum. The disease spreads through the bronchus to other parts of the lung. The openings formed as a result of decomposition are called cavities. TB germs in the cavities are swallowed, mixed in the sputum, and thus are spread to the throat, the intestines, and other parts of the body. Such new drugs as streptomycin and pus have made it easier to cure diseases of the throat and intestines. But there is yet no medicine that works effectively on TB germs which hide in the cavities. Tuberculosis, it is even said, is a disease of the cavities. If these cavities are left alone, the disease only gets progressively worse until finally it takes away precious life itself. Tuberculosis is a disease that can be cured if it is detected in the early stage and the body is given adequate rest. Today as yesterday, an important remedy for this ailment is quiet rest for the body. Patient, unhurried rest. This means to minimize the activity of the lung and thereby assist the cells in fighting TB germs. There is a more positive treatment to keep the lungs still and close up the cavities. That is the artificial pneumothorax treatment. By pumping air slowly, in between two pleuras which cover the lung, the lung is contracted and the cavity is closed. Then again, there is the method whereby the ribs are removed by a surgical operation and the lung is contracted directly to prevent TB germs from getting out. Surgical therapy has made a great advance with the recent production of such new drugs as penicillin, streptomycin, and PASS. When the cavity cannot be closed, whatever therapy is administered, or when the lesion is confined to a part of the lung, the diseased part can now be surgically removed. In the near future, a more effective therapy may be found. But until then, we must fight tuberculosis with full knowledge of its true nature. Tuberculosis is a disease that can be cured for sure if treated early enough. But there are too many people who go to the doctor too late. This is because true knowledge of tuberculosis has not yet been fully disseminated. While it is our duty to rid this world of this dreadful disease, it is the responsibility of our communities to enable anyone who catches it to receive proper medical care and attention.